you know, we have been hearing, I'm going to trust my heart to Lipitor. And the thing we should do with Lipitor is lower cholesterol. Cholesterol is the enemy. It is the killer. And uh, for decades, we've looked at cholesterol as the number one public health enemy. But now, new research, they're always bringing out new research that shows that high cholesterol is actually a good thing. So what's the deal? Health reporter Larry Johnson is going to bring us the latest findings about fat. 20 years ago, doctors told us to stay away from high fat foods like butter, cheese, bacon and eggs because they raised cholesterol and could lead to heart disease. America responded and stopped eating fat. In its place, however, we ate more sugar and other carbohydrates. And how'd that work out? Not great. As a whole, Americans grew fatter and sicker than before. It looks like back then, scientists may have reached the wrong conclusion. A growing number of medical experts now say things like weight gain, heart disease, and other illnesses are not caused by cholesterol, but by something different called inflammation. That means instead of avoiding foods that raise our cholesterol, we need to avoid foods that cause inflammation. Dr. Beverly Teeter studies how different kinds of fat in food affect our health. She says scientists wrongly blamed cholesterol for heart disease when they saw high levels of it in damaged blood vessels. Teeter believes the body put the cholesterol there to fix the problem, which was actually caused by something else, inflammation. It's the inflammation in the vessels that start the lesion. The body then sends the cholesterol like a scab to cover over it and protect the, um, the blood system and, and the vessel wall from further damage. Research also shows cholesterol can protect against respiratory and gastrointestinal problems, helps create vitamin D, and people with high cholesterol tend to live longer. I come from a family that has, my mother's side, had naturally high cholesterol. Her cholesterol was between 380 and 420 when I started watching her medical records, and she died at 97. So I don't think that cholesterol was too bad for her. It's also especially important in the brain, which contains more cholesterol than any other organ and needs cholesterol in order for brain cells to pass messages to each other. So when it comes to food choices, Dr. Teeter says, don't worry if it raises your cholesterol, Focus your attention on reducing inflammation with omega-3s and natural saturated fats. Some fats, however, cause inflammation, so avoid too many omega-6s and trans fats. How do you tell the healthy omega-3s from the unhealthy omega-6 fats? Vegetable oils and mayonnaise contain high levels of omega-6s, so be careful how much you consume. As far as omega-3s, such as fish, olive oil, and walnuts, take an extra helping or a daily fish oil supplement. At one time, dietitians considered margarine, a trans fat, heart healthy. We now know a better choice is butter. In the last 20 years, trans fats have become the ingredient of choice for almost all processed foods. You can tell something contains trans fat if you see the word hydrogenated in the list of ingredients. Natural saturated fats can also cut down on inflammation. Topping the list, coconut oil, which fights colds and the flu and has even reversed the symptoms of Alzheimer's, ALS, and Parkinson's disease in some people. Now that you know some of the good about fats, you should also remember those foods that make you fat and increase inflammation. On that list, it's hard to top sugar and other refined carbohydrates, wheat, corn, rice, and so on. So when it comes to your health, inflammation beats out cholesterol as the new enemy. Take it on by saying yes to foods like fish and coconut oil, and no to sugar, other carbs, and trans fats. 
Laurie is here with us. Laurie, brilliant piece. Hey, listen, how could the scientific community have been so wrong? Well, <laughs> it's because, trans, or I should say, it's because cholesterol was at the scene of the crime, oh. but it was not the perpetrator. It okay. would be like if there are a bunch of house fires in a neighborhood, and you say, huh, I wonder what's causing all those. Well, the there are firemen all over the place. So every time there's a house fire, so it must be the, the firemen. firemen they're causing, causing it. it, but no, it's actually something else. But and they that's also the same made thing so much money. Lipitor has been a multi-billion dollar seller, billions and billions. That's right. And now they see that, uh, for the most part, cholesterol is not the enemy. And what's happened is they've researched it and found out. First, they said all cholesterol was bad. Yeah. And then they looked at it a little, little bit more closely and said, hey, wait a second. Cholesterol, there are different types of cholesterol, HDL, mm -hmm. which is actually good for you, yeah. and uh, omega-3s raise HDL, um, but then there's the LDL, which is bad. So they said, okay, go ahead and eat the omega-3s, the fish oil and the mm -hmm. olive oil, but stay away from the LDLs. Now they're finding out that there are different kinds of LDL cholesterol and that some of the, the, the LDL cholesterol is good for you. That, and it's based on particle size and the big fluffy particles of LDL cholesterol, like cotton balls, those are good for you. And those, oh. are ca those come from eating saturated fat, like coconut oil, butter, egg yolks, meat, and they're saying those are actually good for you. That steak. type of cholesterol, steak, grass-fed is better than the kind that has well, all this, the antibiotics in it. This, I, I was intrigued by his diet revolution, and uh, but he was preaching just what you're saying. Right. Now, there is one type of cholesterol that is bad for you, and it's a subtype of the LDL cholesterol. Yeah, Remember how that? I was talking yeah, yeah. about how size and density matters? The small, dense LDL particles, they're like BBs. And those are caused by inflammation. Yeah. And the two main foods that cause inflammation are trans fats and sugars. And Pat, if people understood how vicious trans mm. fats are, they wouldn't come within 10 feet of them. Because trans fats attack our body mm. on the most fundamental level, on the cellular level. Because trans fats actually weaken the cell membrane so that things that shouldn't be getting into our cells, like viruses, yeah are getting in and things that shouldn't be getting out of our cells like nutrients uh, are getting out every uh, but uh, the the uh, uh, inflammation thing is uh, uh, something that uh, you don't realize you're talking about drinking cokes drinking right. pepsis right. Uh, and the sugar that's there right. in sugared cereals, super pops and all this right. stuff and cakes and pies and cookies there you go Americans consume 156 pounds of sugar a year. 300 years ago, in the year 1700, yeah. people consumed seven and a half pounds of sugar a year. Our bodies are not made to to mm. process that much sugar. And it's like you were saying, the, uh, the, the, the soda and all that, half of the sugar we consume is in the form of high fructose corn syrup. So, and then the, and then, uh, Another big sugar are the mm -hmm. refined carbohydrates, the white bread, the white flour. Those things are just like eating sugar yeah, to turn, your body. Once you eat sugar. a piece of white bread, to your body reads it just like as if you're eating table sugar. So all those sugars and the refined carbohydrates, the white foods, cause massive inflammation and the trans fats too. And really perhaps most concerning about the trans fats is how they affect your brain cells. Mm -hmm. Recently they did a study in the University of Oregon that, and I did a story on this right. about six months ago, it's on our website, where um, people who ate a lot of trans fats had higher incidence of Alzheimer's yeah. disease because with the with the weakened cell membranes, cells in your brain can't communicate with each other and now they're seeing whether trans fats are maybe linked to ADD Attention Deficit yeah, Disorder, yeah, yeah, yeah. ADHD, and autism. Autism. We have seen an explosion in the last 30 years of these diseases. At the same time, we've seen an explosion in the consumption of trans fats. Yeah, they're you know, so well, unnatural. Well, they're well, made in a lab. They're, they're, they're foreign to our bodies. It's like the American way to drink Cokes, to drink Pepsis, 
uh, to eat uh, uh, white bread, to eat buns, to eat uh, uh, French fries cooked in uh, trans fats, right. uh, to eat all these things, and especially the high fructose corn syrup, yes. which is in everything. We've yes. got it in baby foods all the way up the line. Right. So we've got this epidemic of obesity, and people are dying, and our health costs are going through the roof. Right. Why, why don't you think the government does something about this? Well, I I think it's because of the lobbies. The, yeah. I mean, the high fructose corn syrup is driven by the corn lobby, and that's a very powerful lobby. Same thing with the trans fats. So we have to police ourselves. And the way I look at it is uh, with entertainment. I mean, look at all the junk that's given to us on television and in movies, and we have to filter it ourselves. Yeah. Well, they we talk have about to the, police ourselves. The, the nanny state, you know, when I, I, I was um, heavy about um, NutraSweet, which is deadly. It's like, uh, you know, it's, it's like um, white lightning. And um, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, uh, when he was uh, head of one of these companies, he, he got paid a big sum to lobby to make sure that the, um, the results of the tests having to do with the uh, um, uh, NutraSweet quieted down or ignored or whatever, and so the FDA approved these things. Mm -hmm. They're deadly. So, they I mean, are we, deadly. Yeah. They are deadly, and um, we have a lot of information on our website about this, some right. wonderful reading materials, but the bottom line is, you're right, this inflammation is called the silent killer because you can't see it yeah. and you can't feel it, but the things that cause inflammation are trans fats, mm -hmm. sugars and refined carbohydrates, and omega-6 oils, right. but it's okay to go ahead and eat plenty of omega-3s and your natural saturated fats, and a good way to remember which is which is, did God make it? Did God make omega-3, the fish oil and the coconut oil? But these trans fats are made in the lab. Same with the high fructose corn syrup and like you were saying, the NutraSweet and even the refined carbohydrates, all those white flours yeah. and all those white oh. things, those have are, were made in the lab. They, they, they took the regular grain and stripped it of the fiber. Excited and that's it. And inside of our bodies, it causes a huge gush of insulin, which is you're not good about for you. This. I'm glad. I want you to know that your friend here every morning has a big tablespoon and he pours fish oil into a tablespoon and takes two of them. Fantastic. That's why you're such a fathead. <laughs> That's why I was... Because the brain is 70% fat and oh, one of the best I things you can do for your brain with fish oil. One of the best so... things you can do for your brain is take right. fish oil and make sure that in the fish oil you've got about 750 milligrams of the D H A. I have about That's the superfood. 4,000. Uh, uh, if you want to have a brain like a fish, eat fish oil. Lori, you're terrific. My pleasure. It's great to be here.